Donna Gardner. Our next speaker is a professional electronics engineer, a graduate of BS Electronics and Communications Engineering from Alma Computer University, Master of Engineering in Electronics and Communications Engineering from Mapua Institute of Technology, and Doctor of Philosophy in Electronics Engineering from Mapua University. He is also a visiting scholar from the of, at the Department of Electrical Engineering, Chung Yuan Christian University in Taiwan. His research interest is in chaotic, uh, chaos, theoretic concepts and applications, self-organizing and adaptive control systems, renewable energy systems, artificial intelligence-based control, and estimation. He has also published numerous researcher, uh, researches in peer-reviewed scientific journals and presented in various conferences around the world. Currently, he is a faculty researcher at the Electronics Engineering Department of Adamson University. To talk about swarm intelligence, please welcome Dr. Angelo Abeltran, Jr. My discussion for today is all about form intelligence, and uh, I am Dr. Angelo Beltran Jr. I received my PhD ECE from Mapua University, and I'm also a PECE. Now, to talk something about myself, I conducted research in Jomu and Christian University under the Department of Electrical Engineering, which is the third floor of this particular building. I look so, I look so, not so happy in this. Uh, Picture. And uh, this is our research laboratory. This is actually my table where I am doing several algorithms in the FPGA as well as, as, well as in the DSP chip. And then, ito yung tulugan ko actually. If I cannot think of a lot of ideas, I just need to sleep. And then after I wake up, I go back doing some programming and designing again. And then this is my PhD advisor. And uh, after several, after doing several some uh, research on the laboratory, we talk something about research, and then we talk something about publications, and then we are doing that for several years, even until now. And then after I published several articles, I have defended my PhD dissertation. And these are my not so very good panel members. <laughs> and one of them is uh, Dr. Caluyo, and my PhD advisor, who became a panel member during the oral defense. And then this is uh, Dr. Salvacion, Dr. Ko, Dr. Mapatao, and Dr. De La Cruz. Now let's talk something about, uh, about those panel members. Dr. Paglinawan received his PhD ECE from Chung Yuan Christian University, majoring in microelectronics. Dr. Hong, who was uh, seated beside me a while ago, is currently the Secretary General of Chung Yuan Christian University. He took his PhD in electrical engineering from National Tsinghua University in Taiwan. Currently, he is a distinguished professor in EE an IET fellow and IEEE senior member from which I believe later on this year he will be elevated into IEEE fellow and he was a former dean of the electrical and computer science in Chung Yuan Christian University. 
I have heard that uh, he was promoted to become a Dean of the Research and Development in Chungyuan Christian University. And Dr. Kaluyo obtained his uh, PhD in Electronics from University of Nanmon, France. And his uh, research is all about fiber optic communication and microwave. Dr. Sebastian, where my dissertation is all about solar energy. I have to invited him as a panel member because uh, his expertise is far more working with material science and engineering related with uh, solar energy. Dr. Ho obtained his PhD in La Salle and uh, currently he is the R&D director in uh, PIP Manila. Dr. Lopato obtained his PhD from De La Salle as well as Dr. De La Cruz obtained his third PhD in De La Salle University. You know, what I, why I am doing this? Because, uh, you know, one of the most difficult in dissertation defense was that how to make them agree on your particular thesis. Kung saan nagkalad na, by group, kirap na, how much more kung mag-isa ka lang, tapos na sila nag-aaway-aaway, no? That's, what, that's the most difficult thing. And that is why uh, it took me at least seven years to finish my PhD. Of course, I am after that, I graduated. I look so very happy with that. Not so very happy. And then I was the first PhD easy graduate of Mapua University. And then after seven years, after seven years, I had to go back to where I came from to a place where I belong the most, <laughs> paradise. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk something about swarm intelligence. The outline of my topic is about uh, swarm intelligence, and we will be talking something about the nature inspiration, swarming, and then I will be discussing at least two swarm intelligence, two swarm intelligence family for this purpose, because I have a uh, very small time frame for my discussion and that would be PSO and Uncolony Algorithm. And then I will be suggesting several journal articles for you to be able to read about Swarm Intelligence, and I will be showing several engineering applications of uh, Swarm Intelligence. Now, let's talk something about nature inspiration. You know, karamihan sa mga technology na nagagawa natin ngayon is actually inspired from nature. Like for example, yung uh, airplane. This was actually inspired from the flight coordinates of the flight, convention of the birds, and then alam naman natin na yung naging vendor ng aeroplano ay yung Wright Brothers. And these Wright Brothers actually, when they have invented the airplane, it only flies at least seven seconds. And then after that, demanding, and that would be a breakthrough in the aviation industry. Of course, another one is the so-called robotics, like industrial robot, or humanoid animatronics. This was really inspired from our skeleton system. Like for example, this is the industrial arm. This was inspired from the arm of the human skeleton. And the other one was the uh, barcode, or even your QR code. This was really inspired from our fingerprint. Ngayon sabi ng mga scientists, yung fingerprint daw natin ay unique sa bawat isa. And that, for, for, and that for particular purpose, Kinabit did just for security purposes, now automation, and so on and so forth. Now, what is forming? Sabi ng isang author, na nabasa ko, isang book, I think this is the most uh, beautiful definition that I have read. Emergent collective intelligence of groups of simple agents and other definitions, segregation of similar animals, generally cruising in the same directions. And some examples of swarming are as follows. Birds swarm to find food. Bees swarm to reproduce. Nest building of social insects, and so on and so forth. I believe na nakita kayo ng, nakita na kayo ng ganitong klaseng uh, swarming. Yes? And normally, nakikita natin ito sa province. Sa case ng Metro Manila, hindi natin nakikita ito. And if you go also to oceans or seas, and I don't know if you have experience diving on oceans or seas, may makikita kayong ganito, na uh, 
character or behavior of the fish. And we call them as the fish is cooling. And the other one is the bird blocking. And you know, from here, we could actually generate a particular idea or swarm intelligence. Uh, based upon the uh, character of those animals, here are some basic or general observations. It says here that uh, there is no central control where it means that the, all of those birds are actually working as leaders. And then there are several simple rules to follow for the swarms. And of course, these are emergent and uh, self-organizing as well as self-adaptive. Now, I will be, of course, maraming rules, ano? pero for the sake of our simple discussion, I will just be showing several simple rules about swarming of those birds, or even the fish. The first one was uh, avoiding colliding with neighborhood birds. Dun sa figure na pinakita kanina, or even sa inyong observation, have you seen that birds collide with each other, or in this neighborhood? Of course, no. That's the first rule, avoid colliding with neighborhood birds. And the second rule, the velocity of the bird, of this particular bird, for example, matches with the velocity of the neighborhood birds. So, kung ano yung velocity nito, kung ano yung speed nito, for example, yun din yung mga velocity or speed ng neighborhood birds. Walang mabagal, walang mabilis. And then third, of course, they stay near with the neighboring birds. Why is that? Why does the birds stay near with each other? Dito napapasok yung tinatawag natin local best at saka global best. Or in layman's term, local knowledge or global knowledge. So, neighborhood model of your bird. Oh, again. Skip natin yan. Next. Alright, so here. Here is a very simple problem. Uh, I think this is a mountain problem. And this particular mountain has a different local peaks. Ito yung tinatawag nating global peak. Ito naman yung mga tinatawag nating local peak. Ngayon, at iteration one, the bird should be able to um, climb on this particular local peak in such a way that they could be able to reach the global peak. <laughs> now, if we are interested in exploitation or local search, then all of the birds must should have to find the food within these particular mountains. And kapag yung bird naman interested sa global search, then all of the birds or, or all of the swarms should be able to go up in order to reach the goal. Now, for example, we have an iteration one. And then after several iterations, iteration 4, when the bottom is the swarm, inahanap na lahat ng food, ng mga kulay green kanina na pinakita ko. And then after several iterations, then the birds are now actually working towards a common goal, which is the global search. Okay, so one family of swarm intelligence that I'm going to show with is the so-called particle swarm optimization. Now, before I start discussing about particle swarm optimization, does anyone here and the audience currently working with artificial intelligence? Wala, wala bang gumagawa ng mga artificial intelligence products or artificial intelligence research? Wala. Okay, anyway, so swarm, population, particle, that is the so-called agent or individual population. So when we combine them, particle swarm, that means agent, population, and then the uh, particular objective of the swarm is to optimize the problem. Right, so. Of course, we cannot really understand swarm intelligence without several equation. These are the things that you don't want to see, I know, but I have to elaborate these things. Anyway, these are the parameters of the velocity of the particle swarm, and this is the velocity. Oh, it's not nothing T plus one, it means I have to update the velocity. Kapag hindi tayo naglalagay ng plus one, 
Ibig sabihin, static yung velocity. So it should be iteratively updated. Now, these are the important parameters that we should consider when we are working with the PSO. The first one is the so-called weight. And the other one is the local best term. And the third one is so-called global best term. And you know, there are several parameters here that you need to work with, and that is the random variable. Random, the lang kasi kasi random. Kaya nandiyan din natawag na positive random at negative random. You know, when you try to invoke positive value sa MATLAB, for example, without an N dun sa pinakadulo ng random, sometimes it produces a negative value. So, you have to make sure na when you invoke, a random in MATLAB, kailangan ma-terminate natin yung negative value. And when we try to look, when we try to look at the schematic of the uh, equation, here is the inertia factor. And the cognitive factor, or yung tinatawag natin na uh, introvert factor, is the gamma. Is the gamma? Is that correct? Is this gamma or lambda? Yes, this is gamma factor. Ito yung gamma factor, cognitive factor. Ito naman yung social factor, or sa amin, tinatawag natin extrovert factor. That is gamma 2. And this is element. For the sake of information, yung element na tinatawag sa district mathematics is that yung value dapat ng inertia factor is within the range of 0.8 up to 1.2. If, for example, your values exceed greater than or less than 0.8 or 1.2, then the performance of this velocity would be chaotic or random. So, it, check natin yung vector diagram. So, ito yung equation, ito yung position, ito yung velocity. For example, ito yung uh, performance test ng particle. Dapat yung velocity at saka yung position ng particle, it must go to the best position. Kasi ito yung halimbawa yung objective mo, dapat yung equation mo, ma-direct mo doon. Kasi nga nandito yung optimal solution. Amen. Nakatamad yan. Skip natin yan. Okay, so. Here I am, for example. And then, ito yung best performance ng neighbor, yung mga neighboring birds. And then we have the velocity, and then we have the position. Kung halimbawa, ito yung position mo, dapat i-direct mo yung flight mo, yung flight ng bird, papunta dun sa direction ng mga neighbors. Kasi na, you are uh, directing your velocity, or you are directing your position on a wrong path. Kailangan itama mo yung path mo, in such a way na makasabay ka sa mga neighbors. How does it particularly do that? Paano ba nagagawa yan? By means of that equation, there is what we call the so-called, there is what we call the auto-adjustment. No? Because of that particular equation that I was able to show a while ago, yung velocity mo, pwede siyang mag-adjust in such a way na makasunod siya sa swarm or neighboring swarms. So in general, what is general? There are no general here. Okay, particles are searching for the optimality, particles are moving, and so on and so forth. Sige, basahin na lang. Skip na natin yan. Of course, uh, here, ito yung pinaka-block diagram ng system natin or ng particle swarm optimization. Now, ano yung pinaka-heart dito? Ano yung pinaka-bottom line dito? Ito yung initialization part. No? This is the initialization and this is the ending. Ang pinaka-bottom line sa equation is here. Without doing iterations, you cannot really obtain the specific solution or general solution of the problem. Kailangan mo mag-iterate. Bakit, sir? Kasi nga, kailangan mo mag-iterate. Kailangan mo mag-iterate in order for you to solve the problem space. In order for you to determine which of those particular problem or which of those uh, problem space is you are about to optimize speed. Okay, let's see simulation. 
Okay, so here, meron tayong problem space, no? Yung general problem natin. And then, kailangan yung form kumalat. Okay, boundary volume. Why that one is the boundary volume. Okay, yung swarms natin. And as you can see, yung mga swarms, they are chaotic. They are random in terms of direction. Yung iba papunta rito, yung iba naman papunta rin, and so on and so forth. Kasi nga, yan yung character ng swarm. And then, ito yung problem space. And then, ang gusto natin makuha is yung global peak, for example. This particular global peak. Paano natin pwede isolve yan? Kailangan yung swarm, meron siyang, kailangan yung swarm, meron siyang objective function na tinatawag. Ano ba yung objective ng swarm? Is it to determine the maximal value of the mountain? Yung global peak? Or is it to determine the minimal value of the problem? Or yung tinatawag natin local peak? Kung yung objective ng swarm is to determine the global, then dapat yung swarm hook na dun. Kung yung objective naman ng swarm is to determine the local peak, dapat lahat ng mga ito pumunta rito. Okay? Sir, paano mo gagawin yun? Pwede yun sa programming. We have to follow the equation. If you don't follow the equation, yung performance ng swarm will be chaotic. Okay, so neighborhoods. Ito, pinakita ko na ito kanina. Kasi ang neighborhoods, yung mga magkakatabing swarm. And then, paano niya malalaman yung solution? Kailangan ito mga neighborhood swarm magsismisan sila. No? Sir, nasan ba yung solution ko? Sasabihin niya. Nandito yung solution. Sasabihin naman niya. Hindi, nandito yung solution. Sasabihin naman niya. So, kung ano yung chismisa nila, majority, kung ano yung solution, or majority, kung nasan yung sagot, yun ang susundin nila. But if in case na majority, mali pala yung sagot, then you have to double check your algorithm. Okay, you have to improve programming. Right, so, you know, what else do we have here? Yeah. Sangoli? Okay, so here. These are swarms. This is a problem space. And ang swarm dapat hindi makalabas sa objective. Ito kasi yung boundary natin. Pag yung swarm lumabas dito, then you have to terminate that particular particle. Sa so, halimbawa, ito yung objective natin, global peak. So, dapat yung swarm or yung population pumunta lahat dito by several iterations. Now, let's try to simulate. After several iterations, you could see that these swarm are actually working or are actually converging on a global peak. So, dapat ganyan yung performance ng algorithm. Kaya nga tinawag ng swarm intelligence. Okay? So, you have here another equation. I know, you don't want to see these things, but I have to. Shrivel function. You know the shrivel function, when you try to simulate this one, kapag ah. simulate yung equation ako, ito yung kalalabasan yung figure sa MATLAB. Okay? Now, for the sake of information, yung term na donut, yung term na donut, pumpkin donut, Mr. Donut, they are actually came from mathematical term. Meron siyang particular equation na kapag sinimulate mo, it will produce a donut. Now, point you back. One more thing. Choconut. Alam niyo yung nuts? Yung kinakain ng mga bata, yung choconuts. The nuts are actually came from a mathematical term. Meron siyang particular equation na kapag sinimulate natin, it will produce a map. Okay, diba? Kaya dapat yung mga ganong term, yung si pretzel at saka si Dunkin Donut, mas si Mr. Donut, nagpapahala mo na sila sa author kung pwede pa siyang gamitin as a product. Otherwise, dapat may royalty siya kasi sa alien equation. Okay? Anyway, so, sinasabi lang naman dito, this equation is valid if the boundary is within the negative 500 of the positive of 500. Otherwise, or else, this figure could not be able to simulate. Okay, so, 
ano bang objective natin dito? Gagamitin natin yung swarm in such a way that I could determine which one is the maximal peak and which one is the minimal peak, for example. Okay, let's try to simulate evolution. So, ito yung sa MATLAB that uh, we... I actually developed a program for this. And uh, this is the population, the boundaries natin. So, after several iterations, for example, iteration 5, 10, 15, and so on and so forth, dapat yung swarm mag-convert sa solution. Kapag alaman ng mga swarm, na yung solution pala sa problem is within here. Based upon the coordinates from y and x-axis. So, ito yung tinatawag natin mga... May mga ganun eh, may mga pasaway talaga. Kasi ayos sumunod sa population. Okay? Although in real life, may ganun din. Even sa office, kapag dinutusan mo, ayos sumunod. Hindi must be extra kahit extra. Dapat nagali na natin siya. Anyway, so... After 500 iterations, you can see na yung dalawang particle dito, pumunta rin dito. Because they found out na yung solution pala sa problem is within that particular uh, range. No? So, what's the result? Okay, so... After several iterations, actually dito pa lang, no? 16 iterations, this is iteration number. Ito naman yung tinatawag natin swarm best. After 16 or 17 iterations, I, don't, I could not really see it. Yeah. So I think that is around 16 to 17 iterations. You could see that the swarm are actually converging. So napapansin mo dito, after several iterations, hindi na nagbago yung value. So it means to say that the problem has been solved or that the conclusion has been reached. Ang tawag nga pala natin dito, kasi napapansin mo yung value hindi buwaba ba, di ba? Ang tawag natin dito is monotonically increasing. Monotonically increasing. Okay? If in case na yung value dito buwaba, then you are doing a wrong solution. Kailangan patas na patas yan. Kasi nga, it must be converging in order to solve the problem. Okay, so I have here some video. Para makita natin yung uh, ano ba talaga yung particle swarm optimization. Para mas ma-appreciate yung mas maganda ko yung video kasi. Ayan. So yung blue, yan yung problem. And then yung red, yan naman yung swarm. Itong ganitong klaseng problem, ang tawag namin yan is adaptive problem. Kapag static problem, dapat yung blue naka-stay lang sa isang lugar. But if it is na yung problem ay adaptive, o bago-bago kung saan ba siya isosol, then dapat yung swarm sumunod din. Okay? So, I'll ask you a question now. Ano ba yung mga problem sa engineering na adaptive? Sa case ng control systems, what are the problems that are adaptive? Okay, recitation tayo, ha? So, uh, no, robotics, for example, yeah? Mechatronics, what else? Even solar energy, kasi yung irradiation, may diniscuss na hapon, pabago-bago. Diba? Pag-umaga, ali hapon, pabago-bago. Yung kanyang performance, what else? How about yung mean? Mean speed, mean power, pabago-bago yan. Depende yan sa classification or kung saan ko in-install yung wind energy. Sige, skip natin yung idea. Okay, so what else do we have? Yeah, let's continue. Okay, so yung diniscuss ko kanina, yan yung tinatawag natin yung classical PS4. Yung mga ginagawa ng mga researchers ngayon, computer scientists, electronics engineers, PhDs, IEE, PCE, computer science, they have to make the PSO adaptive. Paano naging adaptive, sir? Kailangan yung equation mo, you try to innovate the equation. You try to do some variance of the PSO equation in such a way that it must be adaptive 
on any kind or on any different problems that it must encounter. Okay? So, some terms, exploration, exploitation. Question, what is the difference between exploration and exploitation? Ang um, exploration, ang tawag namin dyan ay global search. Okay? Ang um, exploitation, ang tawag namin dyan ay local search. So si Sir Beltran, i-explore na natin yan. Local search na. Si Sir Beltran, i-explore na natin yan. That's global search. Okay? So, when you are doing with, when you are working with equation, there must be a balance of the equation. Ano yung objective ng swarm? Search mo na yung local, fine. And then later, search mo na yung global, that would be fine. Ano yung problem specific? Search mo na mo, search mo na ba yung global before yung local? Or research mo na yung global before yung local? You have to make the equation. Okay? Okay, so the next family of the foreign intelligence is so-called ant colony optimization. Have you seen an ant? Have you, observed, have you observed their behavior when it comes to food, when it comes to searching food, and so on and so forth? Yes, sometimes, maybe, but we don't care. But some scientists are actually observe their behavior, and then from there, an algorithm has been introduced. And that is a so-called uncolony optimization. Blah, 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 blah. So, for aging behavior of ants, as an example, we have two points. The communication media, which would be wireless or wire, the nest, transmitter, the food, receiver. There are two ants. So, this uh, actual problem, pending, may sangdaan, may pangatong daan, and so on and so forth. But for the sake of illustration, I will just be showing you two points, or two parts. The first part is, has been introduced by the first hand, and the second part has been traversed by the second hand. So two hands with equal probability of going to the food is conducted. And then, of course, alam naman natin na yung first part I must make play kumpara sa second part, hindi ba? And that is why, basically speaking, yung unang ant nakarating doon sa food. Okay? So yung unang ant nakarating sa food. So what happened next? What happened was that, pagbalik ng ant doon sa nest, ay chistis yan, na meron ako nakitang food doon sa isang lugar. So yung pag-iwan ng trail or ng footprint between food to nest, is what we call the so-called pheromone, okay? Yung, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, when you go to the beach, for example, kapag naglalakad ka, paapa, or even actinellas, no? may may iwan kang footprint, right? And then when you go back, pag medyo nalitigaw ka, for example, sa Boracay, you need to follow the footprint. No? Pero of course, kapag nawash out na ng ocean, hindi mo naalan. But sa case ng uncolony, nag-iiwan sila ng thermo in such a way that they would know where will they go back, kung saan sila papunta. So after that, sinismis sa sa pangalawang an, susunod na rin sa pangalawang an, papunta sa food source, and that particular an will take a shorter route until such time na mas maraming an ang pumunta dun sa my first part. And then the iteration will get on going, as you imagine in the algorithm, and karamihan na sa mga ad ay dada na sa may shortest part. Okay? So, yan yung pinaka-general concept ng uncolony optimization. So, we can really apply that on real-world engineering problem. For example, we have here several routers, and we have here several workstations. So, saan bang mas uh, 
magandang path for the information to traverse. Is it from here? Is it from there? And so on and so forth. But this is a very simple problem. I will be showing you a very complex problem by means of the video. So, this video I actually downloaded from a Nikotakoni source. Anyway, so think of this as the part of the ants. Ito yung networks natin. And then we have here point A and point B. Ayan. In real world engineering problem, think of this as routers. So, is it possible na yung ant to determine the shortest route? Yes, by means of the uh, by means of following this equation, the ant colony equation. So, it kept on iterating, it kept on iterating until such time that the most of the stick energy or the pheromone found out na yung pinaka shortest route ay nandito. Nakapa niyo ba yung point? Yes. That's how this warm intelligence works, okay? I have another video. Paano naman sir, kapag yung problem adaptive? Anong ipig ko sabihin? May hindi na-rebel ka. Hindi ba ba? Gawa tayo ng several points, no? Okay. So, think of this as the routers. Napakaraming yung network, naging complex, no? So, kung ako yung an, parang makadaan ako from different towns, ano ba yung pinaka-shortest spot na pwede kong daanan? So you can see the un, or the algorithm kept on iterating. Ito kasi yung problem sa algorithm. Kung hindi ka mag-iterate, you cannot really solve the problem with one iteration. Kailangan mo mag-iterate ng mag-iterate in such a way that you could really optimize or you could really solve the problem by means of optimization. So, ayan. Bawat un, pinipili niya kasi may pinaka-the-best or kung saan yung pinaka-malapit. In such a way that uh, we could really find out the shortest path for this particular problem. Okay. And then, the optimization, blah, blah, blah. Skip natin yan. Okay, so. Dito lang tayo sa algorithm. While, alam naman natin kung while statement. When we say while statement, the problem or the iteration will not going to stop until such time that it find out or until such time na it met the criteria of stopping. Okay? Kapag hindi na met yung criteria ng pag-stop, then yung wide statement will get on the rating. Others, kapag natin algorithm actually sa swarm intelligence, yung dalawang tinestas ko is yung PSO at saka yung ant colony. Pero pati tinatawag na bacteria, Artificial bee, bat algorithm, bat, lowworm, fish, and all that. Lahat na ng insect. Isipin niya na may algorithm niya. Cockroach, crocodile, mga kabuson, lahat niya gawin ng algorithm. Okay? Okay, so this is the bat algorithm. This was published from Elsevier, Journal of Computer Computational Science. And the author was Yang Nomi and Xin Xie Yang. Si Xin Xie Yang yung nag-invento ng Firefly algorithm at saka BAT algorithm. It is one of the most famous algorithm na ginagamit ngayon for engineering problem. And meron din tayo na tamang na Flower Pollination Algorithm. This was recently published, I think way back 2016. It was recently introduced, 2016. Flower Pollination combined with B, ginawa ng algorithm. Yeah, maraming kalokohan ng mga tao ngayon. So, I suggest you to read several journals. For those who are working with masteral and PhD degree, I believe that you are familiar with the IEEE transactions and uh, SWARM and evolutionary computation. Dati kasi yung SWARM intelligence topic lang siya. Kung maga sa algebra, ano lang siya. Uh, isang topic na pwede mo nang i-discuss ng 3 hours. Ngayon, yung swarm intelligence, it became so very popular in such a way that the swarm intelligence became a subject itself. 
of the United States of America, may pwede kang mag-specialize sa swarm intelligence. Master of Science in ECE, major in swarm intelligence. We can feel of study. Engineering applications, you could use the swarm intelligence to train the neural network, and of course to uh, optimize the solar PV system by means of maximum power point tracking. So, I will just be continue with the neural network. The neural network is a uh, connection of uh, weights and biases. And neural network can be used for forecasting. Pero kailan meron kang given na data set. No? Without the data set, you could not really use the artificial neural network. So ito yung backbone ng neural network. Meron siyang connection of weights and biases. This is the hidden layer, this is the input, and this is the output. And then, of course, you cannot really understand neural network without some mathematical term. Now, what does the superscript and subscript denotes? Superscript denotes the what? Layer. First layer, superscript. Yung pangalawang script, subscript, 1, 2, 3, 4, that denotes the position of the layer. Halimbawa, ito. Ang kanyang position, or ang kanyang equation will be y sub 1 to the 2. Okay? Kailangan mo maging specific, kailangan kasi maging vector yung problem in such a way that you could really solve the problem. Okay? This is an autonomous equation. Autonomous partial differential equation. Maximum PowerPoint tracking, ito yung diniscuss ka kapag yan, no? engineer sumbol. And he talked about solar energy, but uh, yung MPPT na discuss na ng konti. But to, for the sake of information, pwede mong galing kapitin yung MPPT sa Swarm Intelligence. You just need to develop a program. Okay? So dito, DSP, gamit ka ng C-Language. Kung gusto mo naman ng FPGA, gamit ka ng PHDL uh, or even very long language to develop the program by yourself. And then we have an analog input, voltage and current by means of the sensors. And then the output of the DSP chip or the FPG should be in terms of uh, digital. No? And then the passing of the black diagram in order for them to generate a particular EWM. This is the duty cycle. Then. Para to control the boost converter. And then from there, we could really uh, optimize or maximize the output of the power. So, with the case of DSP chip, develop a program and so on and so forth. And then, you could really use the MPPT to tune several parameters like the passive logic and then the P parameters or I parameters or the PID parameters and so on and so forth. And then you could really see that the performance of the swarm with respect to the output power is far more superior than the counterparts. This is the fuzzy logic, this is the perturbation observation, perturbation and observation, and this is the swarm intelligence uh, maximal output power. Simulate lang yan, pero pag in-actual mo yan, that's a very difficult job. Several applications, you could use swarm intelligence in computer science, mechanical systems, manufacturing, and so on and so forth. Napakaraming application. Medicine, business, forecasting ng stocks, or even forecasting of one manalo ng loto. You could use swarm intelligence. Wala lang kasi ang time. <laughs> and then, the related fields, signal processing, vision, formal languages, Biological cybernetics, financial purpose, ECG. Nowadays, may nakikita ako mga appliances na kalagay doon fuzzy logic. Yung, I think that is a rice cooker. Even refrigerator, may nakita ako doon fuzzy logic. Sabi ko, oh, I used to have a fuzzy logic. And then, I'm not so sure if you are familiar with Sophia. Sophia was the first robot that was that became a new citizen in Saudi Arabia way back October 25 last year. Sabi na Sophia, dapat yung robot na kanoon din ng family. Oh, maestro. 
and then uh, Google at saka yung ibang manufacturer ng vehicle, they are actually working with artificial intelligence. Ito yung mga tinatawag natin ng adaptive control system. So nakapansin po yung car, it drive by itself. Even for solar vehicles, how to maximize the solar energy, you could use a solar intelligence. And this is my working station in Taiwan when I was working with uh, motor control. I do several programming with these controllers. This is Tricor DC1166 from Infineon. And when I do my PhD dissertation, I was working with a prototype. This is a DC to DC converter, Asoxani and Heat Type. And then, of course, you cannot be an easy without knowing how to use oscilloscope. It's very basic for us. Mukamero pa dito, yung mulunong ng oscilloscope, papatuhan ko. And then, kailangan, marunong ka rin gumamit ng matlab. Kasi, yung simulation, saka yung hardware, kailangan i-interface mo yan. Kung yung, yung output ng simulation, hindi nag-work sa experimental verification, it means that there is something wrong with your experiment. So you have to work it again and again. Okay, so there are long videos here from not related with my presentation, but I think this is a very interesting video. If you can do it for the next several years. Although this video is a little bit longer, but I want to see it. Let's see what happens in society. Okay, so this is the first
Okay, so that ends my presentation. Thank you. Hello. Paano maging doctor daw? <laughs> Ayan. So, uh, to award the Certificate of Appreciation, we will request Engineer Dennis Molina. Engineer Dennis Molina. <laughs> Ay, sir. si Dr. Bertrand bilang first na graduate ng uh, PhD na makuha uh, si Sir ay isang history uh, nas Sir, nasa ano na ba kayo Sir? Nasa history na na makuha na Sir <laughs> uh, Sir, ano yun yung first graduation na makuha university? Uh, um, last three or uh, four months ago na Yan. Kasi makuha university na ngayon, di ba? MU. Di ba? MU. Uh, katabi na LPU. Wala. Well,